Hi, this is Gina Verso. I'm here with the Wolf Press Podcast at Long Beach Comic Con. I'm here with Javier Hernandez, the artist of El Morto, and also a Whittier resident where we used to have the podcast. How are you doing, Javier? Yay, Whittier. Very good, Gene. Thanks for having me here. Well, thanks for coming here. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm already here. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, Javier, um, so, you know, growing up, um, I, I would uh, see a comic often in a lot of, like, art stories around Whittier. A lot of uh, like uh, Hispanic shops. They would have uh, they would have like copies of El Morto, or they have like ash cans. Yeah. Wow. You go way back. Too. Yeah. Way back. And um, yeah. No. And then the movie came out, and it was always like um, you know I've read a few issues growing up, and it was like always something um, that I would just see around uh, Woody here, and it's uh, cool to wow. finally meet you and uh, talk to you about this. Oh, that's great. Thanks. You know, I do a lot of interviews, but I don't get too many people from like the old Whittier area, so yeah. it's great. So yeah, I grew up in Whittier. So I kind of wanted to base the comic, at least have some of the elements from Whittier. So the character Diego de la Muerte lives in Whittier. Yeah. Um, you know, write what you know. Yeah. New York has enough superheroes, but I've never been there. No, so. yeah, of course. And I believe um, was the uh, the film with uh, Wilmer Wilmer Valderrama. Right. It. Do you guys? They filmed there as well, right? No, no. We we wanted to. Okay. Um, I suggested some. You know, can we film something in Whittier? And we actually scouted around a couple of places, but. In the end, it was better for them financially and such to keep it in that whole L.A. Hollywood area because mm -hmm. you know you're adding distance, you're adding just more cost to the film, and it's, it was already an independent, small budget film. But we did film in East L.A. Oh, okay. Uh, Evergreen Cemetery um, and in the neighborhood right outside there. So, how is it like um, seeing your creation in, uh, in being adapted into film? Well, it was really cool because I'm sitting there on the set, and it, most of it was filmed. In the actual live locations, I think we only had one or maybe one day, maybe two in a studio. So we were we'd be at uh, Evergreen Cemetery, we'd be at San Fernando Mission, out in the streets of L.A. So it was really neat just to see all these hundreds of people working on something that, based on some little comic you made in your house in Whittier. Yeah. The, the day it really struck me though was maybe the second or third day when Wilmer comes out in the actual costume because the first shots he did it was just as Diego, but. To see him walk out in the black mariachi suit, in the, in the white makeup, that's like, it felt, then it felt like real, like, okay, there's no work. And can you talk a little bit about uh, your influences for the character? Right, yeah, the, the first issue was just a photocopy, black and white uh, comic. Uh, with, I had it printed at a Copy Max. Oh, wow. Okay. In La Habra, on Imperial. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're still there, I think. I, yeah, for, I believe so. From what I, what I, what I checked. So, um, that's how it started as a black and white independent you know, self-published thing, and then after that, eventually, I started publishing it, uh, and with a color cover on slick paper mm -hmm. and through a larger printer. And to some people that aren't uh, residents there, Whittier is kind of it has its own sort of like ghost tales and scary stories. Did that influence the character a little bit? Um, they might have. I never thought about it so much in those terms. But Whittier is interesting because it's an old Quaker town. Mm -hmm. Um, Turnbull Canyon. Turnbull Canyon. That's where you get all those stories. Yeah. It's, the uh, devil worshippers and all that crazy stuff. Um, but Whittier itself, it's pretty kind of like all American town. Yeah. It's a college in the middle town. Of, uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like I said, its roots are Quaker. But you go there now, it's I call it like Eastern East LA. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, it was mostly Mexican families in the area, and so it has an interesting dichotomy. You know, it's called Whittier. Yeah. That sounds so white, like John Greenleaf Whittier. Of course. And but <laughs> all the people or majority are Mexican American, first or second generation. Yeah. And um, just changing gears here a little bit. Um, this year, uh, tragically, uh, Steve Ditko passed away. Oh. And you uh, did a panel yesterday on on the uh, on Steve Ditko and his yeah. legacy. Um, can you talk a little bit about that because you had his uh, nephew come? Yeah, yeah. So Steve Ditko. So all the fans out there know he's the. Uh, He's a cartoonist. He's the co-creator of Spider-Man, uh, Doctor Strange. You know, he drew all the designs and drew all the stories in Stanley with uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. and the Marvel Dick, Method. The Marvel Method, say. yeah. And then Steve would go on later to do at DC, The Creeper, Hawk and Dove. And he's done a ton of other stuff. Uh, and so he's been working independently most for the last 30 years through uh, his publishing partner, Robin Snyder. Mm -hmm. So he's got tons of black and white graphic novels and tons of comics. So he passed away uh, back in June, I think. Yeah. And we had a panel here yesterday, a uh, tribute. So it was Marv Wolfman and uh, Dean Haspiel, myself, 
and the moderator, and then uh, Steve Dickel's nephew, Mark, he, uh, we follow each other on Facebook, and he's always joining in on the conversations, the Dickel group. Mm -hmm. So he noticed I was going to be here. He's like, hey, I, mean, I, I can come down and check that panel out. So then I wrote him. I go, well, okay, that's great. Would you uh, mind if I call you out or invite you on the panel? I want to make sure it's okay. He's all, if you like, that'd be fine. So we're doing the panel, halfway during the panel. Okay, folks, we got a special guest. Steve Dickel's nephew, Mark, would like to come up. So he came up, you know, you know, everyone applauded. And he just started sharing some stories that you never, because this is his uncle. We're talking about Steve as an artist and a legend and an icon, an industry figure. This is, this is my uncle. He would come, you know, we'd go to his house or he'd come to our house and he'd hide behind the, the, tr the tree and pop out and scare us. Right. You know, it's so nice to hear such things like that. Yeah, and it's really cool because um, Steve Bickle was a very private person. Exactly. Yeah. Very private. Thanks for saying that. Everyone always says recluse. And he's private. Yeah, he, you know, he had his privacy. He's not reclusive because his name wouldn't be in the New York phone book all mm -hmm. his life. And he wouldn't put his name on his door. He doesn't want to be bothered. He'd rather not be bothered. Who I wouldn't want to be bothered if I'm drawing in my studio and the door's knocking all day. Yeah, my fanboys. Yeah, 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 about Spider-Man. So he's very uh, definitely a unique individual. Yeah. And very important in comics. I mean, oh, yeah. you talk to most comic scholars, whatever, top ten list, top five list. A lot of them, most will probably have Dicko somewhere on that list. Yeah, and you know his art for the time. You know, if you look at and I love <clears> Jack Kirby's art. And all the other, Mar you know, Marvel artists like Don Heck, his yeah. was, you know, all the characters are lanky, or they're so expressive in their face as right. opposed to this the muscular look of... Yeah, that's what everyone said on the panel, and that's, and that's very true. They, they went, it wasn't the stock, bulky superhero look. More lanky sometimes. Sometimes a lot of anxiety in their face and, yeah. and their posture. Mm -hmm. So as an artist, I think I learned a lot about that, is expressing the characters inner uh, emotions without having to put a word balloon around it. So like if you can look at my comic before I letter it, you either get a sense of the story or I think you get a sense of their emotional state. Yeah. And I think a lot of that would be learning from people like Dicko. Of course. Yeah, and you know, he's uh, one of the unsung heroes with comics. So. Yep. Yeah. Not, not, not at this table, but yeah. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> not enough fans know about his entire career, just, just Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, which is huge, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You know, the, the dichotomy of you have a hand in co-creating, like, one of the top three, four, five, like, just com graphic icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. Money-making, of course. And yet, you do 30 years, the last 30 years of your life, you're doing these independent, underground-type black-and-white comics that... But that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Can you down here, Javier? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the projects that were coming up? You said you're remastering the comic? Yeah, I'm doing a new, uh, a brand new Alberto story in full color this time, and it's going to be a 20th anniversary issue. So it's a real special type of story. I got a bunch of guest pinups, and I have this extended interview that a friend of mine did, Teresa Rojas. She's an instructor up in Modesto. And I go, listen to an interview so I can put it in the book. So she asked a lot of deep, interesting, deep questions. So it'll be a special little book. And then other than that, I'm working on uh, my next uh, Latino Comics Expo. Me and my partner, Ricardo Padillo, co-founded that in uh, 2011. So we're doing a new show this Mar March 2019 at Modesto College. I think it's like our eighth show. Where can uh, people find you at on social media? Uh, the quickest place would be Hobzilla.com. Because uh, then there's links on there to like Instagram, not MySpace, Twitter, Facebook. Twitter. I deleted the MySpace about a couple of years ago. Oh, thank you so much, Javier, for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Gene, and thank you, fans. Thank you.